today I have a really cool challenge for you guys and for me because I am trying to defeat this pocket travel chess computer and I will see if I can defeat it before you and you fall asleep so it's going to be very relaxing and hopefully very cool so let's take a look at this thing that I just got in the mail it's an unboxing video even oh it's upside down This chess computer was made in 98, so it's the newest chess computer we've dealt with so far. And if you can see, it says Kasparov. So Kasparov lended his name to this in 98. That would be one year after he lost a game. He lost a match even to the IBM chess computer, Deep Blue of interesting history there I have a video on that and let's see on the unboxing here we get um, the rules of chess we know those and doesn't matter manual with instructions And look at that. They have never been used. That's pretty amazing. So this uh, this chess computer is what? 24 years old? And it has never been used. Are these good for ASMR? Okay, let's so we will be the first ones to play with these pieces um, it's interesting because I think pieces here has obviously never been used they're quite entangled here we got the first one out already but if you see the condition of the chess computer itself although it looks quite new it doesn't look like it's uh, it looks like it has been used before of this computer is of course that it's a travel chess computer that you can bring with you it's a very cool concept stupid band-aid sorry about that but um, yeah we can't have me bleeding on the chessboard because this is not really bleeding edge chess technology so I won't bleed on it is that the king? that's the king I think we will fast forward over some of this And 
two extra pawns and two extra queens for each side. So let's see how we can play this. Okay, that make let's see if we can disable that. I will just consult the manual for appropriate level selection. Okay, so while I consulted the manual, I also learned that this little amazing device runs at 4.2 megahertz, not gigahertz, megahertz. Uh, and I will press play. I'll see if I can take the sound off. And it says, the computer says, D2 to D4. And it's my move, and I guess we will try again for the Brazilian's time to go for the Budapest Gambit. Like so. And it does play C2 to C4, so we do get the Budapest game with it. It's very interesting. So the computer is thinking, that means we got it out of its pre-programmed opening book. And uh, it has 15 seconds, so it will come. I thought it would come with an answer now. Apparently not. Um, maybe I chose a wrong opening. Okay, it has 30 seconds. And it says D4 to E5. So it captures the pawn. And um, how many uh, computers have I beaten so far with this opening system? Let's see. So if you're new to this channel and you're new to what this is all about, I play these old chess computers. Um, they have pre-programmed uh, opening books um, where they know the best moves from Grandmaster games in a number of positions and I have this tricky opening called uh, the Budapest Gambit um, which I'm playing against it now and I have uh, defeated a few of these computers with this particular uh, opening system. So now it says D1 to D4 like so. And what is going on here? So what's going on here is that I gambited this pawn. I sacrificed it so that the computer would come in and capture it. I then moved my knight up here to g4, attacking the pawn, and the computer defends it with the queen, which is um, honestly, not a particularly good move. It is not a recommended move. Um, but it does have some merit, maybe. Maybe. So I'm thinking, first I'm thinking, can I sacrifice the knight on f2? I don't think so. I think, because the queen is also attacking the knight, you see. So I think the most logical thing here would be to play a move like d7 to d6, opening up an, a defense of this bishop for the knight. And, um, well, saying goodbye to any hopes I have of recapturing the pawn, but uh, gaining a pretty significant lead in development. So I think just okay. So that's my move. 
Uh, let's see what the computer comes up with. So I am opening up a defense of the knight with the bishop after playing pawn to d6. Um, I am now threatening to capture the pawn on e5 with either pawn on d6 or the knight. Um, I can think about playing knight to c6, attacking the queen. Um, and okay, so here, here we see the move c1 to f3. g1 to f3. So it's playing knight here. So the knight is defending the pawn. Um, so I didn't want to go for knight takes pawn, helping my development. Um, but um, I don't have problem with this at all. I will just develop my knight. Um, put it on c6. It will now attack the queen on d4. It also attacks the pawn on e5 and the computer plays d4 to d5. Okay, so queen here to here. Okay, and I think we can very safely just come in and capture this pawn with the knight. I think we have convincingly won the opening battle. Um, I think we are doing very, very well. Maybe, like, I am a... I, if you have watched uh, Stranger Things, they have a thing they call the upside down. And I'm kind of seeing this whole thing a little bit upside down because uh, due to filming, I have to be behind this thing that you can uh, put down here to protect the chessboard while you are traveling which is a very cool feature. Okay, it plays b1 to c3. It develops a knight. That is absolutely fair. Um, and I'm thinking that we should just press our advantage, get on with the development, uh, the queen is exposed, um, so a move like bishop to e6, attacking the queen, attacking the pawn on c4, developing a piece uh, and not weakening my position in any way. I mean a move like that can't be too bad. It plays d5 to e4. Like so. And should we just go ahead and capture the pawn? Then we will be up a pawn. Um, I don't see how that would be a problem. We just have to capture with the knight. Um, because if we capture with the bishop, we may see knight takes knight. Um, and then I'm not even sure that would be a problem because we can recharge with the other knight. Um, but we would then have a pinned bishop that could be subject to attack by them maybe pushing their f-pawn. 
I don't know. Or is it the other way around? Let's say bishop takes c4. Um, knight takes knight. Knight takes knight. Pawn to f4, attacking the pinned piece. Um, so maybe it's better to capture with the knight. Knight takes c4. Um, hmm. I'm not sure there would be anything wrong with that. Um, it does allow them to get a little bit, little bit back into the game. Um, in a way. Uh, we could also play a move like pawn to c to f5, attacking the queen. Uh, the queen would be harassed again. I don't know if we are gaining too much by that. So let's say I play a more timid move like like maybe bishop to d7, totally reasonable move. We would then probably see pawn to b3. And we will no longer have the option of capturing this pawn on, on c4. So I think I will try to capture it like this. Um, and then if we see a move like after, so we played knight takes c4, and if we see a move like pawn to e3, unveiling an attack from the bishop on the knight, we will probably um, play knight back or knight to b6, something like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool playing on this super small computer 4.2 megahertz i don't think you can even buy a device with 4.2 megahertz uh, in this day and age i mean your fridge is probably running at least 300 megahertz uh if it has any sort of chip inside okay it plays c1 to c5 c1 to g5 Attacking the queen. Okay. Um, is that a problem? Can we just play knight? Oh, I mean, bishop d7. I think bishop d7 is completely adequate. Bishop to d7. I have to not. Uh, um, I have to not make a tactical oversight here. G5 to c1. Oh wow! It's because it wants to protect b2, so it says, "Okay, that was not a good move." It goes all the way back to protect b2 because I have the knight threatening b2. So the only thing the machine really uh, accomplished with bishop to g5 was to help me develop my bishop to where it wanted to go anyway. So it gave me a free move. Now I can castle, uh, no problem. This is where you can see sort of the limitations of these chess computers. A human player, uh, if they were considering playing bishop to g5, would kind of automatically, if they had played just a couple of games of chess, think, okay, what is the most likely reply my opponent can have? And a move like pawn to f6 immediately attacking the bishop or indeed bishop to d7 like would be have to be on the top of every intuitive list list you would make 
so but because the machine doesn't have intuition it, it just it doesn't think like that it just thinks x amount of moves ahead given the allowed time and its parameters and then it chooses uh, a move based on the minimax algorithm so it chooses a move that has the highest it where it minimizes the risk so where it has the least uh, where it has seen the least effective replies from the opposing side with the maximum uh, potential good stuff that could happen. So I'm, I'm explaining this pretty par <laughs> pretty terribly, but the minimax algorithm is you minimize risk, you maximize reward, and you play that move. And uh, even though you can see intuitively, like with it, that can't be the best move in the position. Just giving me a free move that you know a human would discard that move very very quickly. Okay, let's see. I play castles. Okay, I'll have to h8 to like so. So if we take stock of the position, my opponent has the computer here, Kasparov, I'm playing Kasparov. <laughs> no, the Kasparov, Avalon, Cytec, 4.2 megahertz computer has developed two knights and a queen uh, and has lost two pawns, where the black side, us, team ASMR chess to all of you guys who are on Team ASMR Chess. I really appreciate it. We have developed two knights, two bishops, and we have castled. We even have a little bit of control over the center in terms of pawns with this pawn on d6, and we have lost only one pawn. So we are up material. We have more pieces. Uh, we have better development and we don't have any tactical weaknesses, save king and save queen, where this queen is of course a liability. Okay, b2 to b3. This move, let's see, press down, and here, uh, it frees up the bishop, doesn't have to protect b2 anymore, and it attacks the knight. Uh, but the knight has a very intuitive square it can go to. We can just go to the center square here, knight to e5, knight to e5. sure why that is not being registered or maybe it was and we are actually on the computer's clock let's just take a look to see if it may if it will make a move here in some seconds four No, so we are on my time. So we go from, oh, it did make a move. Okay, so it plays C1 to E3. So it goes the bishop to E3. Uh, it's a pretty horrible move, I would say. Um, can we so this move is not so good because it blocks in the pawn on uh, e2 and in general this bishop has been moving uh, on the wrong diagonal I guess it I it, it first it went, went to g5 then it went back to c1 and now it went to e3 I think a plan of putting it on b2, looking at uh, castled k5, 
king position here would be much better. And I think we shall just try to press our advantage playing pawn on f7 to f5, further harassing this queen. Um, and trying to activate this rook here. It plays e4 to a4. Like so, to get out of the way. Um, and now we can perhaps try to get even more aggressive. I would love to play a move like uh, pawn to f5. Unfortunately, we would just see bishop takes, rook takes, and then queen takes. Um, then I'm thinking we could play a move like knight takes knight. Pawn probably pawn on g2 takes knight. Um, that could be interesting. Um, we could also try to play like gambit of this pawn on on b7, play b7 to b5. That would be an unprotected pawn, but if it was captured by either the queen or the knight, uh, our opponent would fall further back in development. If it's captured by the queen, we can play pawn to f4. If it's captured by the knight, um, is there a way to exploit that? Maybe not. Um, we also have moves like bishop to f6, looking at this rook and this knight could be an interesting idea. Um, we have actually a lot of cool ideas going on. Um, I think I think bishop to f6 can't be um, can't be too bad of a move. Um, we are we are looking here on the long diagonal. We are controlling the center quite nicely. We are basically having a good time. Um, yeah. So. What will our esteemed computer opponent do here? Not too sure, not too sure, not too sure. Um, I haven't been very impressed so far. A4 to B5. So the computer goes pawn hunting. Looking at the pawn on B7. And uh, if you watch my videos, you'll know that I'm very big on chess principles. Uh, why is that? That is because uh, if you, like most people, don't have that much time to devote uh, to practicing your chess, you can get a long way just knowing principles. Simple principles like don't move the same piece twice or three times if you don't have a really good reason, particularly in the opening stage of the game. Another principle, don't uh, develop your queen too early. Another principle, if you are behind in development, don't go pawn hunting. Don't try to, you know, spend a lot of moves just to get one single pawn because the problem is that I have like a gang of uh, 15 guys here, if you count the king as well. 
uh, and I'm ready to attack these 15 guys but these 15 guys most of them are still lying in their beds and asleep and um, and uh, I mean I can I can just overwhelm my opponent here I actually have a forced sequence where I win a billion pieces because I can play knight takes knight and it plays and c4 to what okay um so that's check knight takes f3 check uh only sensible move would be uh, e e2 takes f3 so and now of course I have bishop on f6 takes knight on c3 that is check um, And I'm going to win the rook as well. It plays e1, that's the king to d1. And I will play bishop on c takes rook on a1. And I am just absolutely destroying the Kasparov chess computer here. Um, I hope it's still relaxing even though the game is uh, sort of brutal <laughs> um, so I have no idea what the machine can really come up with to try to survive here it's seeing how it has been playing so far I'm guessing it will play Queen takes b7 that's um, where I could even maybe just sacrifice the pawn it plays b5 to b7 and this is attacking the knight I can acknowledge that um, but I don't think that's too big of a problem I could even try to play something like knight a5 attacking the queen and attacking the b3 pawn with a possible knight takes b3 a takes b3 bishop takes b3 check so I think I will try that trying to finish the game in style um, so what will the machine play here I think um, if, if of course this machine here is excellent if you are a beginner uh, or if you are traveling like you are playing you're going on the interrail in Europe or you have traveling for a long time and you don't mind giving the computer a long time to think about for its moves so it's like you make a move you read your book 15 minutes later you get a reply you think about it you make your reply and so on but for as a machine to just sit down and play without having anything else to do uh, if you are an experienced chess player um, the machine is probably not strong enough uh, so b7 to b4 okay so it's attacking the knight uh, while still defending b3 
what I'm thinking we can play a move like pawn from c7 to c5, attacking the queen with the pawn, defending the knight with the queen, uh, taking even more space, um, and hopefully uh, being able to get in with this knight takes b3 idea at some point. Um, so we have captured a bunch of pieces, we are up a bunch of material, uh, but we are up even more material than it looks like, because this rook could almost not be on the board, it's not doing anything, the h1 rook, it's not doing anything at all for, for white here, okay, so we see b4 to a4, so insisting a little bit on uh, defending b3, but uh, we can now amp up the pressure by playing rook on h8, rook on h8, a8 I mean, we play rook on a8 to b8, so now um, if we play knight takes uh, b3, Let's see, we see f1, we see f1 to d3, which I think is a huge mistake, because now, now we can play knight on a5, takes b3, that can't be captured by the a2 pawn, because we will then play bishop takes b3, check, winning the queen. Um, so now it's mostly a, you know, we mostly have to finish, finish up without making any huge mistakes. I guess probably the best move for the machine is to castle here, however crazy that sounds. Uh, of course it's not legal to castle because the king has moved, uh, but it would be amazing for the machine to castle here, but it can't. So we see a2 takes b3, wow, that is, that is going to be a problem because we will now play uh, Bishop on e6 takes b3, that is check, and we are also attacking the queen. So uh, I guess we will see queen takes d1 to e2, I think, at the best move here though would be queen takes bishop, rook takes queen, then bishop to c4, check, and we would then probably see, we would probably play uh, d6 to d5 and then bishop takes rook. Instead the machine plays d1 to e2, we play bishop takes queen, so b3 takes a4, and now we just have to checkmate. We are so far ahead on material that we would have to make a long series of horrible blunders to uh, even draw this game. We see d3 to c4. So this is interesting. Why didn't it play this before? d3 to c4. Um, let's check. 
but I was thinking we could play d6 to d5, seeing how this pawn is defended by the queen. Now, how will we finish this game? How will we finish this game? We need, we need the rook to come in with a checkmate. If we can get the queen on a dark square, that would be really good, because we could then come in with a queen on the dark squares to throw a check. Okay. So we see h1 to a1. Uh, so we see rook takes our bishop on a1. And we can say that's okay. We will then play d5 takes c4. And the position is hopeless, but how can we finish this up um, in an elegant way? We see a1 to a4. So it's getting back a little bit of material, capturing a uh, uh, bishop there, but we are now ready to come in with rook on b8 to a2. And that, my friend, is check. So, if I think we're very close to checkmate, e2 to e1. So, isn't this almost checkmate if we play rook a1 check, king e2, queen d1 checkmate? Am I missing something, something there? I don't think so. Let's check it out. Check. Um... e3 to c1 okay so i think we have a couple of ways to win this in two moves um maybe the most fun is actually rook on f just to allow everybody to be part of the fun here. Rook on f8 to e8. Check. It plays e1 to f1. And now we can either play rook takes c1 checkmate, but uh, we haven't yet used our queen, so I think it's only fair to play queen d1 checkmate so that every single piece uh, has played a role in the game. So we play queen on d1, d, queen on d8 to d1 and that is checkmate. It's saying something and it's saying end. I don't know if you can see it there and that it's the end of the game. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's also the end of the video. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you had a good time.